Hey, I'm Kenneth Wajda. I'm a professional photographer here in Colorado. Welcome to another one of my weekly or bi-weekly Leica talks, all things Leica. So today I'm going to talk about the, the Leica 3G. This is a new body for me. I had the lens, but I was driving across the Midwest. I ended up stopping at the Columbus Midwest photo and they had this camera in mint condition and it was priced at $700. And I know that they go for $700. And I really liked it. And I like the viewfinder. I'm used to using the F, the 3F. This one with a collapsible lens fits in my jeans pocket. And I like having the fact that I can put a camera in a jeans pocket with a small collapsible lens. I usually actually put a 53.5 Elmar on because it's only half that size. But that's a 50 f2 at the moment that's on there. Again, the camera didn't come with that. And I also didn't pay that. Because you have some negotiating room with used gear. They brought it in somewhere. They're trying to make a profit. But you don't know how long it's been sitting there. And I know that these go for 700 and up. But I was willing to pay five. So I said, I'll pay five. And they said, we could do 550. Well, that's pretty close. I know I can get that money out of it. That's money that I'll probably end up making money if and when this ever sells. And in the meantime, I get to put a 3G in my pocket and carry a camera or put it over my shoulder. They threw a case in and have a simple camera that I can carry over my shoulder. The strap has been tested. Yes, it's leather. And that's an inexpensive way into, into Leica, relatively. Now, again, I already had the lens. I have some other Leica 3. So that was one of those ones where I knew I could put a 50 F2 on that. But now I have a big viewfinder. The 3F had a small viewfinder. The 3G is the first one with the larger viewfinder. Is it as large as the M series? No, but it's much larger than the 3F and the 3A and 3C and the 2. So that was one of those wins for me. This will remind me of my trip and my road trip. This will be a camera that I'll use and see how much I use. It's one of those ones that I know I can get some money out of right away because I could bet I could get seven, eight or nine for it just for the body because I see them going for that. And the fact that they were willing to sell for 550, that's the kind of thing where you have the ability to ask for those prices. The worst they can do is say no. And they were glad to. But I would bet a lot of people would go in there and would never ask. I guess it depends on the kind of person you are. Like when Mary Lee and I go to a restaurant, we don't always follow the hostess where they're going to seat us. We're kind of both visual people. We scope out where the windows are, where the corners are that we would like to be that might be available. And we'll ask, is it possible we can sit over there? And the answer is ultimately always yes. And we end up having an experience sitting where we want to sit, not where they were going to sit us for convenience, but it might be by the middle aisle where there's a lot of foot traffic back and forth or by the kitchen door where there's going to be a lot of people coming in and out and some noise. So to me, I've always been in that situation where I was interested in asking because I could always go where they take me if they don't seat me where I want to sit. I could always pay full price if they don't want to take my offer. But sometimes they do take your offer. So there is negotiating rule, even in Leica world. And Midwest Photo was so much fun. And if you go there, go talk to, I wish I remembered her name. She was a young woman. She was probably in her 20s. I told her I'm internet famous and we were joking about that, but I showed her my website. We had some fun looking at pictures and what I like to shoot, and what I shot on film, and what I shot on digital. And it was just a treat. But so that's the Leica 3G. It has quick roundup, one second to a thousand. It has uh, slow shutter speeds in the front, just like the 3F really, but it has bottom loading, it has to have the leader cut a little longer than normal uh, regular film comes. So some people don't like that. It's a little slower to load, but not terribly. I don't shoot 
36 frames in a day. I usually shoot 36 frames in a week or two. And then it has the first viewfinder that was much larger. It is actually a larger body than the 3F. So if you were saying, oh, I like the 3A, the 3C, it'll be the same size. It's actually a little bit taller. To make that viewfinder bigger, they had to make the top a little bit taller. And so some people say this is almost approaching the size of the M3, which came out just before it. This, the M3 had come out in 54. This was the last of the threes that came out just after it. And they put all of their technology into making the best three they could, they said. And a lot of people consider it that. And I like it. I've had one in my hand before, but I really couldn't afford it. And it was seven or $800. And I'm like, well, that's probably fair, except for I can't afford it. And this one, only because it was a bargain that I end up picking it up. And like I said, it's one of those cameras that I'm going to keep in my bag or my pocket. This is like my go-to right now. And some of it is we're enamored by things that are physical, that have meaning. This has meaning to me from my trip and seeing my family, seeing my friends, shooting some pictures of them with that when I was traveling. So right away, I have, you know, moments from that trip that were made with that camera. There's something special about that. I guess that's a little bit of a nostalgic romantic in me. Anyway, that's the Leica 3G. I do recommend it. I like it. I like all the Leica 3s, but the Leica 3G, if you want the best viewfinder of the 3s, that's it. It's still got a split viewfinder. You use the far left one to focus the rangefinder, and then you use the right one to compose. And then it has two frame lines in it for a 50 and a 90. I'm not much of a Leica 90 shooter, so maybe I'll use that someday. But overall, I love the 50, and that's a good sweet spot. And then if I want to, I could always put a 35 on it and then put a 35 finder on it. And that's an alternative because I have a 35 accessory viewfinder that I could put on there. But then it won't really fit in my jeans pocket because it's, then it's too tall. So I do like it with a 50. It's kind of simple and ready to go. In fact, if anything, I'll put a 35 in my bag with a little 35 viewfinder. And then if I really want to switch to a 35 and not put it in my pocket, then I can carry an extra couple of accessories and an extra an accessory and a lens. So now I can still shoot 35 with it. But it doesn't have a 35 frame line inside the viewfinder. So you need to use an accessory with it or just estimate, which also works too. A lot of times I could tell when I'm standing somewhere, I can tell where 35 millimeters would cover. A lot of times I shoot street with a 28 or a 35 and I don't even look through the lens. I just know what I'll get approximately. So you could probably use the 35 without the finder and you can still get away with it. But in any case, the 3G is a nice addition to my collection of cameras that I use. I probably have too many, but I don't have new cars, probably because I don't have new cars, I buy cameras. All right, that's today's photography talk, the Leica 3G. Hey, if you're enjoying these, hit the subscribe button. If you can support, hit the Patreon. I'll be back in a couple of weeks. We'll talk more Leica photography. And as always, here's the good light.